Right, it's a couple of uh, cold rims we've been working on. Um, that's the first uh, first controller. Put the set point down a bit, and it's set a bit high, so uh, so it wouldn't come on. Put it back up 10 degrees. There we go. So the solenoid just kicked in. Um, what we've done with these is um, we've wired up the defrost heater off of the auxiliary relay. There's an auxiliary uh, you can program it to do various things. So that if the room gets too cold, the heater will come on to warm it up because these these cold rooms are built inside an old shipping container. Um, so there's no there's no heat from the surrounding building to uh, keep the room warm in the winter. So that's the first room. And we've got a uh, dual discharge cooler. Quite working a drain on that side. So, so unit. Then uh, we've got the um, second room. This this room here is going to be a drying room. So the cheese is going to come in here after it's been moulded and stay overnight to dry. Um, so they can keep this room at 22 degrees, or if the cheese is too wet, they can lower it to 10. That will help dry out a bit more. That's just draining down to the floor because they've got a floor drain. This, this is again, it's like the end wall of the shipping container, so behind the cold room wall will, will be the two doors where you load the container if it was still being used. Um, got two temperature sensors there, which I'll, uh, I'll explain why in a bit. That's another cell. Cell evaporator. These are the EC fan motors, they're the high energy efficiency ones. Um, we've had to run all the conduit surface mount because there's no, um, we couldn't get above the roof. We normally run it on the ceiling. Now we We've got another floor drain there. Everything's built on a slope so that they can wash the floors down and it'll drain. Um, this is going to be a packing area in here. Um, this second box, we've got two set points on here, um, 22 and 10 degrees, and uh, to make it easy for them to switch between the two, I've put two separate controllers in and a changeover switch, and uh, whichever one comes on, um, you've got a light to tell you which one's on. Um, and then we've got a heating light, because at the moment the room's heating, and uh, a cooling light. Um, this is our, obviously this is the high temperature one, so this is trying to get the room up to 22 degrees. Um, if it's above 22, it'll cool it down to 22, and then shut off. And then this one's going to would cool it down to 10, and if it gets below. 10 or I think it's 9.7 something like that um, it will warm it up so uh, it shouldn't get too cold in the winter I mean if, it, if it's going to be sort of you know 0 minus 10 or something for a few weeks in the winter there's no heat inside the building other than what we put into it and um, with those high energy efficiency fan motors you don't generate any heat um, in the room as such from the, from the unit running um, this is a little panel I made up, which is why it looks a little bit DIY when you get inside. Got two separate transformers, as recommended by the um, wholesalers for these controllers. Um, got our changeover switch. I've got some fuses in there for the control circuit, fans and the solenoid and the heater are all separate. Um, so for fans. Uh, blow a fuse for whatever reason. Um, it will take out the um, control circuit for the uh, 
heater so the heater won't run if the fan's fuse is blown. We've got thermal overloads in the um, evaporators in both of them so if, even if the fans pack up or the contactor sticks in or anything like that happens it's got a mechanical stat in there that would turn the heaters off at about 27 the room gets up to 27 um, so that shouldn't be a problem hopefully uh, so we've got one contact on the right is the one that does the heater and the one on the left is the changeover one I'll just uh, zoom in on that and then uh, See that one switched on because we've gone back to cooling. Depending on uh, what mode, what unit it's on, so it's doing nothing at the moment because both the lights are off. It's reached a set point. That one's just shut off. That's got down to um, that one's set at ten, so it's gone off at ten, and it's just gone a little bit colder. So that's that really. Uh, let's go and have a look at the outside units. Okay, that's the two systems. This one's the uh, high temp room, no, to like the low temp room with a dual discharge cooler. And we've got these um, Unite uh, Silensis, no, Winsis, Winsis units. Um, they're quite a tidy lot of unit actually. Um, when I specified them, they, it was Danfoss Optima units, but uh, between us quoting the job and doing it, 404 has gone out of favour. Um, I'd originally specced it on 134A, so they couldn't have, didn't have any units for that either. So we've ended up going on 449A, which is what these are rated to. Um, so they're quite a nice little unit. You've got a little catch here, and then the door opens up. And you've got a contactor and a switch. Um, we've put the overloads on there as an extra. Because um, the original Danfoss units we quoted had our overloads on, I think. Anyway, they're a good thing to have, so we've got overloads on there. And we've also fitted the fan speed control to keep the head pressure higher in the winter. Um, but they're quite a nice little unit. You've got a little Danfoss pressure switch up there. You need to take compressor, crankcase heater on there. Service valves are fairly easy to get to. There's a little catch down here that comes out and pops into that hole. Um, can't see if you can see it on the camera because the screen's got water right now. But there you go, that'll go in there like that so you can work on it. But they uh, seem quite nicely well made, a nicely made little unit. Um, it's only a little it's a half horsepower or something. A uh, third of a horsepower, it's only a little tiny little compressor. Well, we've still hardly got any heat in the liquid line because it's about two or three degrees outside at the moment. But uh, yeah, we've got it on these mounting blocks. Um, feet stick out quite a bit from the back, but you can more or less, that's the minimum amount of room. You can actually butt them up against the wall if you had to, and then they'd still got enough room for the air to get in. That's their minimum requirement, is the length of the feet. Isolator on the unit, and then that pipe which just goes up here across here. We've got a crankcase pressure regulating valve um, so that this will never see anything over an equivalent pressure to about three degree evaporating temp because this is rated up to five degrees um, evaporating. Um, <coughs> so when the room's at 22 degrees and we want to pull it down, that's going to stop that getting overloaded, and then We've also put this Toshiba um, aircon in for their um, production room. We've done that in a bit of cable tray so that we could go across the doors easily. Um, yeah, it's not the tidiest, is it? But what can you do? Don't really lend themselves to fitting stuff in. Or to, uh, um, it's all done so that it could be moved because it's rented. So they could just disconnect everything and then crane them out and go and put them somewhere else if they have to. Let's 
running about 60 psi, which is an equivalent of about minus ooh, minus five and a half, minus six evaporating temperature. Um, I haven't got a uh, PT chart for that 449 because it's quite new. I've got an app on my phone, but it's not been updated yet with that one in there. 449, 448, and I think 452 are the um, popular ones for uh, replacing the um, 404 with. So what are we down to? We're down to 15, 15.6. So it's got another three degrees, and it'll get it all cut out. It's running okay. 